Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. This series will highlight some of the cutting edge applications of Illumina technology, and today we'll focus on epidemics. Influenza is a perennial favorite, and I certainly hope you had your flu shots this year, but uh, there's many others, of course, you know, HIV, cholera, Ebola, too many others to mention. So why is this important? Uh, the problem is really uh, antibiotic antibiotic resistance is growing. And also with the additional threats of biowarfare, um, epidemics is really a threat today. To track an epidemic, it's really important to be able to determine single mutations in the bacterial genome with a really high level of confidence. And the reason why that is, is as follows. Um, so if I'm tracking a uh, epidemic, I may have a bacterium that may acquire a mutation that mutation in the next generation as it evolves uh, is carried on and it may acquire another one. And so forth, it may acquire a few more. Now, if I, if I suddenly have a patient that appears with this bacterium and these mutations, I can clearly see that it follows from this one and it, it precedes this one because these mutations are carried over. So it is quite easy once you have um, these sequences at that resolution, it becomes really easy to actually de de uh, follow the epidemic along. And because the microbial genome is so small, our technology can cover it hundreds or even thousands of times and get extremely accurate results. And also you must get the results really quickly. So this is where MySeq really comes in because you can get the results very quickly so you can act on it. Once you have the genome, you can identify the organism and you can find out what is it. And it sounds kind of silly, but at the moment, the way things work, you really have to have a good guess what, what it is before you can test for an organism. And because many diseases start with flu-like symptoms, it be, can take a long process to actually identify the organisms. But once you have a sequence, of course, you immediately know what it is. Also, once you know what it is, and you know the sequence, you can kind of estimate where it's come from and how, what is the risk and how fast will it spread and also what can you do to prevent its spread. And ultimately, you want to determine the treatment. So quite honestly, once you've got the genome, you've got pretty much everything that the bacteria has got there to tell you. So let me show you an example from a study that started in 2005. It's, it's a small study in a family, but I think it really shows you just how accurate this information really can be. The, the mother uh, presented in the clinic with, uh, she's um, part of a family, she's 53 years old. Um, she's got a husband, two daughters, a son, age 13, and a dog, age six. And she presented in the clinic and was diagnosed as a, a urinary tract infection and it was a pathogenic uh, E. coli. The rest of the family was also tested and they were all treated. But later, two years later, the dog presented with a urinary tract infection. So clearly there was something going on, but just exactly what? Um, it was very difficult to, to actually determine how um, the transmission happened within the family. In 2008, a paper was studied, and uh, if you look at the image, you can see uh, at the time they used serotyping and um, also the available gene markers to track the transmission. But if you, again, if you look at the image, it really looks like a cat's cradle, and you can't actually figure out what happened, how the sequence of transmission happened. Two years later, they ran the whole, exactly the same samples on a genome analyzer two. And they got about 127 fold coverage and it um, much, much better resolution. So if we look at the image, we can see um, what the resolution really looks like. The blue circles indicate points of transmission. The horizontal lines indicate the uh, daughter one, daughter two, the dog, the father, and the son. If you look at the top left-hand corner, you'll see in 2005 was where uh, the initial presentation of the disease was. The mom came in, she was, uh, is basically uh, the first instance there. And um, as the rest of the family was treated, you can see uh, most of them responded. These arrows indicate um, the mutations in the organism, just as I showed you uh, on the screen. And um, we can see that the, one of the daughters 
wasn't properly treated and she proceeded to infect the dog and um, ultimately a number of the other family members. So this is a very good explanation of how very good the resolution is that you can actually see within family members over a very short period of time how this infection happened and um, how this technology can be used to track diseases. And you may think this is, is um, uncommon, but uh, ultimately I think it, it is more common than you think because just because this was a pathogenic uh, bacterium, it, it ca you, they actually showed symptoms, but very often we all have lots of bacteria in, in the environment. So consequently, uh, it's all over us and this kind of transmission probably happens a lot more than you think. Um, but now we can actually have tools to track these infections very easily within hospitals. And uh, there's been reports where they've been able to track uh, infections between wards and even between individual beds within a ward. So tools like MySee can quite literally provide over, uh, results overnight and very, very good quality results. And this ability to uh, uh, identify and track microorganisms fast and efficiently will ultimately help us limit the scope and duration of epidemics and infections.